Welcome back to the navigation bootcamp. In the previous module, we discussed about uh, map sources of India, which allow you to uh, identify a lot of useful terrain details to plan your route through new unexplored regions of the planet. In this uh, chapter, we're gonna talk about global positioning system, which is basically modern, uh, modern day based uh, navigation using GPS, which is, uh, ever present now, you, given the availability of good GPS receivers in most of the mobile phones and GPS watches. With GPS, we will be able to identify our uh, position on the planet um, uniquely and also cross-reference that same position with any geo-reference map, which we'll be discussing in the next chapters. So let's take a look, what is GPS? GPS is basically nothing but a constellation of around 30 satellites launched in the previous decades by the US Department of Defense. Uh, these 30 satellites will basically be beaming, transmitting a signal which can be picked up by any military as well as non-military civilian receiver in your mobile phone and running watches to basically identify your exact location on the planet. Positioning is done using triangulation. Uh, you need a clear view to the satellites, obviously, so GPS is not gonna work indoors under a concrete roof. You need a clear view to three satellites uh, to find your uh, exact uh, location identified by a latitude and a longitude. And a fourth satellite is needed if you also want to define, uh, identify your height or elevation, basically. So how does positioning work on the planet? Uh, let's take a closer look. And let's probably go to Google Earth where we can show it interactively. Uh, GPS has basically uh, divided the planet in uh, two different ways. Uh, first of all, there are several circles here. The circles can be enabled using the view menu grid. So we can show them by enabling the grid. If you keep the north on top, so we have the circles running from uh, the north to the south pole here. And you can see various circles, one, two, three, four, etc. So these are basically the longitudes. The zero longitude corresponds to the prime meridian of Greenwich. Greenwich, uh, basically a town in the UK through which this uh, zero longitude will run and as we know being on a globe being a sphere and the circle circumference of the planet is basically 360 degrees so if you go around the globe fully will have a total of 360 degrees of longitudes which will be divided in 180 degrees east covering africa europe as well as uh, asia and the 180 degrees Western longitude, which are shown here, West 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, which uh, cover obviously uh, the Americas, US, as well as South America. So for example, if we take uh, Western longitude of 50 degrees here, then basically it shows this circle from the North to the South Pole. And basically any point on the planet here below this circle will be identified by a longitude of 50 degrees west, west to the left of the prime meridian of Greenwich. So these are the longitudes which uh, basically divide the planet in these type of circles. We also have the other circles which are kind of are 90 degrees on top of this. Starting with the equator, uh, at equator basically corresponds to uh, the middle of the planet, you can say in the middle between the south, sorry, the north and the south pole. This is called zero degrees latitude. Anything on top of this basically will be called uh, zero all the way to 90 degrees. The North Pole will be called Northern Latitude. Anything below the equator uh, from zero again to 90 degrees on the South Pole will be called South Latitude. So we here, here we can see 10 degrees South, 20 degrees South, 30 degrees South, 40 degrees all the way till 90 degrees touching the South Pole. So now basically every layers on the planet can be uh, seen as an intersection between longitude here. Say for example, this point is identified by the longitude 30 degrees east from the prime meridian. This circle intersecting with 
the 10 degrees north of the equator, 10 degrees northern latitude. So this point can be identified as 30 degrees east, comma, 10 degrees north. Of course, talking about degrees, degrees are pretty rough numbers. The entire uh, circumference here along the equator corresponds to 360 degrees. And as we remember all of us from history class, uh, this is around 40,000 kilometers. Converting this in miles, uh, one nautical mile, and we talk about nautical, not land miles here, one nautical mile corresponds to 1.852 kilometers. So that basically converts these same 360 degrees in 21,598 miles to cover the entire circumference of the planet. So 360 degrees corresponds to this, which basically means one degree corresponds to one sixtieth of this, means uh, this will be equal to 60 miles, which is again a pretty long distance. So to Accurately identify our position, we further divide a degree in 60 minutes. So one minute corresponds to one mile, which is basically the definition of a nautical mile. It corresponds to one minute of longitude, long or latitude. Further dividing the mile into 60 seconds uh, brings us to one second equal to 31 meters. And then again, if we talk about tens of seconds, then we come to a precision of three meters which is basically the accuracy of most uh, civilian uh, GPS receivers. Okay, so let's go back now and, for example, zoom in a little to home sweet home, Chennai. If you go to Chennai here, search, uh, and take a look what is the longitude and latitude of Chennai. Chennai obviously is located east of the prime meridian, so we'll have an eastern uh, longitude and is north of the equator, so we'll have a northern uh, latitude. So if you look at the in intersection again of this uh, circle here, this uh, north to south circle corresponds to 80 degrees 15 minutes east. Intersecting with this line, this is the latitude corresponding to 13 degrees and 6 minutes north. So this intersection is I uniquely identified by those two numbers. Zooming in a little bit further, let's, get, let's go to the beach along which I usually run in the evenings, Bessie Beach. And let's uh, just pick up some random point here. I can see the famous memorial here of, uh, okay, not shown now. Let me mark this landmark here on the beach, and voila. So this place is now uniquely identified by 80 degrees, 16 minutes, and 19.49 seconds east of the meridian, prime meridian, and 12 degrees, 59 minutes, 57.75 seconds north of the uh, equator. So voila, there you have it. You mastered now the art of uh, GPS um, okay, identifying any point in the planet using a latitude and a longitude. Okay, let's take a look further now. So the same with the GPS uh, data formats, right? So as we record uh, a trail using a GPS receiver in a phone or a watch or whatever, or a dedicated, like say, Gorman handheld GPS receiver, what this device will do is it will basically record a sequence of what we call track points, waypoints, track points, so it's basically going to record, say, depending on the seconds, on the settings, say every five seconds, it's going to record the exact latitude, longitude of your exact location. It will also record the elevation, actually, and a timestamp, right? Five seconds later, as you walk along the trail, it will identify your new position in latitude, longitude, elevation, and timestamp. So that's basically how uh, we uniquely identify any route, any trail, which we have been working with also in the previous chapter. This is uh, the format, XML-based format used by GPX, the standard GPS data format. Also pretty much uh, used frequently as the KML format, stands for key Keyhole Markup Language. It's another XML-based format, mostly used by Google Earth, Google Maps. So here again, you'll see a different notation, but the same thing. It's a sequence of latitudes and longitudes and elevations. Okay, so one other interesting thing is uh, if you open 
let's say the the previous module we uh, downloaded the GPS rail for Cedarhut. If you open this one and uh, generate what we call an elevation profile, it's going to pick out the elevation points from uh, the GPS file, and it's basically against the horizontal distance that you have walked. It's going to plot the various uh, heights that you covered. So starting at the base. Uh, at 141 meter, you climbed up uh, slowly initially, and then a little bit more steeply, and then very steeply to the top of Cedar Park, 977 meter. Uh, went along, along the fort for a while, like uh, one and a half kilometer here, and then again started descending steeply, less steep, a bit steeper, and again uh, gradually into the valley. So this gives you like a kind of a vertical view of the elevations uh, that you have recorded in your GPS file. Okay, time for some hands-on. Let's go to the map now and uh, let's do a couple of practical uh, assignments. Let's first of all start with the Sahiadris. Let's go to Alan Port. There we go. Uh, basically, I'm here back in my first map, which I created in the first assignment. So you can go to this uh, same map and basically add Alan Port to your map. Again, any mapping application any uh on the mobile on the desktop everything will work in latitudes and longitudes so let's copy this one and let's do a little bit of mathematics here so alan fort my first point is located at in india so we talk about northern latitude and eastern longitude so this is now shown in decimal degrees so if you want to convert this back into the familiar notations of degrees, minutes, and seconds. Then we'll have to do a small calculation. So let's open our calculator. Here we go. Voila. So this basically corresponds to 90 degrees. And then what remains is 0 0.58, sorry, 58317. Uh, so if we multiply this by 60, then we get the minutes. So this is 34 minutes. Subtracting the minutes again, what remains the seconds, multiplying this by 60 gives us 59.4 seconds. Four is enough as a tenth of a second corresponds to uh, three meter precision, which is pretty much accurate. Same for the longitude, we have 70 de 73 degrees, degrees east. What remains is 0 0.66089 which will be minutes, multiply this by 60 gives us 39 minutes. And then again, minus 39 gives us the remaining uh, in six in seconds, multiplied by 60 is 39.2 seconds east, voila. This is uh, along. So if we make a small map maybe, maybe I'm gonna move a contour map here to see a little bit more, okay. So now let's take one more uh, point, say Kulang Fort, which is nearby. There we go, Kulang. Again, we add it to our map. And again, we get the exact location in latitude north, longitude east. There we go. So north and east. So if we just maybe visualize this a little bit more comprehensively, voila, here we have uh, the map. Let me take a small screenshot of this, put it in a paint application, take whatever I want here. There we go. I'll space this. And so basically talking about the longitudes, so the, uh, here are the latitudes, the uh, horizontal circles we saw in Google Earth, voila. And here we can also display the vertical circles, which are the longitudes. Voila, there we go. Uh, so we have already calculated for uh, along as being uh, this corresponds to a specific latitude, and this one was corresponding to the. Uh, longitude of Alan. So let's do a similar calculation now for uh, Kulon. There we go. Back to the calculator. There we go. So this corresponds to 90 degrees. 
And same degrees because one degree corresponds almost to 60 miles. That's pretty long distance. Whatever remains here now is 0 0.59332 multiply this by 60 will give us the minutes, 35 minutes. And then again, subtracting the minutes, what remains is the second multiply by 60 gives us 35.9 seconds, 35.9 seconds north. Similar for the longitude, 73 degrees, degrees east. And what remains is 0.63853. Multiply this with 60 will give us the minutes, 38 minutes, and then minus 38, moving the minutes, multiplying by 60 gives us the seconds, 18.7 seconds east. Okay, so let us also add this to our uh, small reference uh, picture here. So we have this latitude corresponds to this exact latitude and uh, this vertical line corresponds to this specific longitude. Voila. So now on a map, we could start calculating the difference uh, in terms of latitudes and longitudes between both locations. So we could calculate the difference in latitudes between Alan Malang uh, this way and the difference in longitudes between both parts uh, measuring the, uh, the distance between these two vertical lines. So if we do that uh, roughly, what do we see? Uh, so let's add the difference now in latitude and longitude to just get a little bit more familiar with uh, this new numbering system. So latitude again, uh, if we subtract both the latitudes, what do we have then? We have 19 minus Coulomb's latitude here. Voila. So we have uh, basically this difference in degrees. So if you multiply this by 60, we get minutes. It's still less than a minute. So again, we multiply by 60 to get seconds. So we have 36.5 seconds difference. 36.5 seconds is the difference in latitude. So let me immediately show it here. This is uh, 35 seconds between the latitudes, latitudal difference between both parts. And then similar for the longitude, we can just make the difference again, space minus uh, the longitude of Coulomb. It's, voila, it's so many degrees. Multiply by 60 gives us minutes, 1.34 minutes. So 1.3416 minutes, basically. Newt, voila. Or if we abbreviate a little, we could say like this, 1.34 minutes. Okay, so what we looking at this distance is basically 1.34 minutes difference between uh, the longitude of Coulomb and the longitude of Alan. So converting this back to what we're familiar with, like meters, say, for example, so then it's pretty simple. 36.5 uh, seconds multiplied by its 31 meter per second gives us 1.1 kilometer, roughly, 1,131 meters in uh, latitude difference. So again, we can make a note here, this corresponds to so many meters. So almost 1.1 kilometer uh, difference uh, north to south. And then uh, subtracting the uh, minutes here, 1.34. So 1.34 multiplied, one minute is 1,852 meters. Boom, gives us uh, 2,481 2 meters. So this will be the difference, in which we can clearly see the difference between the uh, Longitude is slightly bigger, uh, more than double than uh, the difference between the uh, latitudes. Well, we can probably save this. This will be a GPS assignment. We'll do. We'll request you to do a similar. Let me save it in GP, JPEG format. It'll be easier to manage. 
will uh, give you similar assignments uh, between two other points, same, but this gives you basically a very good understanding how to calculate differences in terms of degrees, minutes, seconds, latitude, longitudes, and then convert it to meters. If you work, if you're gonna work with maps, uh, the maps will all, all be marked with uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. They will not be really marked in terms of meters. So, okay, let's go a little bit uh, further now. Uh, Let's go back to the map question now, yeah, like the elevation provided. Yeah, so before the assignment, one other interesting thing is you can just pick up any map here. In this case, uh, we look at uh, one Serbia of India map of uh, somewhere in Nahalapuram, South Chennai, where we went for the trek this weekend. So if you look at most of the maps, American service, Soviet army, um, India, Serbia of India maps, you will have the latitudes and longitudes mentioned on the maps. So in this case, we have a map where the top corner here corresponds to 79 degrees, 45 minutes east, obviously, because we're in Asia, and 13 degrees, 30 minutes north, right? And then if you uh, look at, say, the top right corner here, you come to 80 degrees. So 80 degrees minus uh, 79 degrees, 45 minutes is a difference of 15 minutes across this map. 15 minutes again will be roughly 15 minutes multiplied by the altitude 52 uh, meters in a minute, which is basically the definition of a nautical mile, will give you 27.7 kilometers. Uh, is the basically, I mean, the area covered by this map. Being a square map, uh, similar, uh, the latitudes start from 13 degrees 15 minutes to 13 degrees, 30 minutes, so uh, north to south, the height is again 15 minutes, corresponding to the same 27.78 uh, kilometers. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, okay, so for your first assignment, uh, I want you to do a similar exercise as we did with uh, Kulon and Alan. I want you to basically go again to your uh, map and identify the difference between two Himalayan passes. Uh, one will be Indrahar Pass. Voila, here we have it. So I'm gonna hide uh, this previous module here. Let's see if we can find Indrahar Pass. Voila, there it is. So we mark this pass here, add to the map, Indin. Copy the latitude and the longitude. And again, we'll have to do a similar uh, calculation Voila, here we have it. As we can see, it's further up north. So we are now at 32 degrees uh, rather than 19 degrees previously. And another pass being the Gotch Pass. The Gotch Pass, I'm not sure. Yeah, Gotch Pass is also there. Uh, voila, there we go. So again, you take the latitude and longitude of the Gotch Pass and you uh, again convert for both Indrahar and Gach to uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds, for both the latitude and the longitude, then you calculate the difference between uh, both the passes, the length, latitudal difference, the longitudinal difference, both in minutes, seconds, as well as in meters. And then you create a small uh, image like this, uh, which you then save. You put it in a public Google album. You can actually put it in the same album which you created uh, for the previous assignment. So we had I created an album uh, for the previous modules, Voila, Maps of India. In the same uh, album, you can actually add this uh, assignment also. There we go, GPS assignment. You upload it in the public album. So last uh, time you ensured in the options menu that the album was set uh, public, so then you can copy, copy this link. And basically go to ultrajourneys.org, uh, fifth module, uh, global positioning module, where you will submit the link to this album along with your email ID for me to review your understanding of latitudes and longitudes. Congratulations, you have uh, covered another uh, important topic in the navigation bootcamp. Get ready for the next module, which will talk about georeferencing of maps, essential again to identify uh, the exact location of the map on the planet Earth and identify the exact 
latitude and longitude of any point uh, on that map. That's all.